Now, it seems very odd in a place like Canada to be promoting rewilding when you're undergoing a massive dewilding. It's Canada has already provided us with two very powerful environmental parables. One is the collapse of the Grand Banks fishery and the other, a much more positive one, is the amazing popular response to the attempts to destroy the forests of Clarkwatt Sound. Uh, but now it's providing us with a third one, which is the worst of all, which is seeing a highly sophisticated, highly civilised nation basically descending the development, uh, the development ladder towards reliance on a single primary resource, which happens to be the dirtiest resource known to man, namely the tar sands. And, and the way in which that oil curse, the, the influence of the tar sands industry, has begun to change the whole character of the nation and to, to brutalise it in effect. It, it's, it is an extraordinary thing for a foreigner to witness. It, it, we, we're seeing in effect a, a very beautiful and very sophisticated, sophisticated nation being ransacked by barbarians. And it's not a foreign army, it's your own blinking government. And what, what this has led to is an unprecedented, even by Canadian standards, an unprecedented assault on the environment, uh, which spreads outwards from the tar sands. So for instance, in Alberta, you've now got the Alberta Caribou Committee, composed of well-known environmentalists such as Petro Canada and Shell and BP and Trans Canada Pipelines and Coke Petroleum and all, all those other friends of the earth, who have got together to try to work out why the woodland caribou is declining. And of course, it can't possibly have anything to do with the construction of oil pipelines, the mass destruction of forests in order to dig tar sands, pits, seismic lines, roads and all the rest of it, and the fragmentation of the habitat of a very shy animal. No, there must be another reason. And they've got together and decided that the reason is wolves. Wolves which have lived alongside caribou for thousands of years and which uh, scarcely ever eat caribou. They prefer other prey. But wolves are the problem, so wolves are now being culled in far greater numbers than before, poisoned and shot from helicopters. It's a very clear sign of how the politics of Saudi Alberta have come to dominate the, the entire nation. Similarly, we see, for instance, in British Columbia, the way in which salmon farms have been allowed to run rampant and destroy the spectacular sockeye runs in the Fraser River, for instance, uh, as well as doing a lot of other damage to the marine ecosystem. We're now seeing oil prospecting being pushed out into the Canadian Arctic. We're seeing massive incursions on the boreal forests. We're seeing a c continued refusal to list um, some iconic threatened species under the Species at Risk Act. Um, it, it's vandalism on an enormous scale. But I believe that an ounce of hope is a more powerful stimulant than a ton of despair. And while, of course, we must confront that vandalism by every non-violent means possible, by all the democratic legitimate means at our disposal, we also have to bear in mind a vision of a better world, a world in which the destructive processes are reversed, a world in which our silent spring could be followed by a raucous summer. And that world, I believe, is brought about through the philosophy that informs rewilding. And that's what I'm trying to do in Feral.